What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Sidecast episode. I'm back on one of the episodes right now because I went to Berlin for a week. So um, I'm going to do this again. Today on the episode, we have Strachinia and Milos. We are back with the original group. What are we going to talk about? Well, what I've seen over the past few months, mainly in the Discord channel, is like people are asking the priests or us questions about what do I do when there's no Orthodox church near me? So we're going to tell you about that today. At first, a lot of people ask, can I go to the Roman Catholic church? Can I go to a Protestant church? Short answer, no. If you want to become Orthodox, you become Orthodox. The canons forbid us from going to um, heterodox uh, prayers, services, etc. We're not allowed to do that. So if you want to become Orthodox, you become Orthodox. But what do you do if you have no church near you? Milos, can you give us a tip? One of the examples is better double check. Like, for example, if you do a Google search and you couldn't find one right away, go try to find somebody in your area who might know somebody. It could be possible that there is an Orthodox church near you, but they don't have a website, for example, because the, ma the priest is maybe older and most of the people are there are like elderly Im immigrants and they have no technological knowledge. So they won't be able, you won't be able to see them on Google or, or find their websites. So it's better to always double check that. A great and tool for that is, sorry if I interrupt, but a great tool for that, if you're, for example, in the US, there's a website that I think it's all Orthodox US. I don't, I'm not sure about this, but you can search on your area and you can see the close or the nearby churches that are in your area. So that's a little tip. Milos, continue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, another thing that you might be, will be able to do is you can go to your city hall and ask there if there is an Orthodox church because they will know for sure because they are listed on the religious buildings if there is one. So Very they true. might be a great help as well. What about you, Strahin? Well, for, for me, like, just looking on Google, often you will not find everything. Just like searching on Facebook, like I found the Orthodox Church I go to, or my my mom found it searching on Facebook, or was it my grandmother? I don't I don't know. But like Facebook is like a valuable tool because again, a lot of people who will attend the church will be older and older people tend to use more Facebook. So that's like the easiest thing to do. Just get off your Google search and just pop on Facebook, uh, yes. type in Orthodox Church near you and, and look for that. Also, right. like you wanna, like I was going to say, sometimes there won't be a church really near you, which it can seem like super far away, but it's better to go like only sometimes to a church than like never go at all. Yes. Right? So I want to react on that. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It's really about not too far. It's how far is your devotion? How? How? How do you say that? I'm having a blackout. Um, <laughs> no problem. Like, yeah, how far um, are you how willing to go? How far do you want to go to go to church? For example, there are these African pilgrims that walk for days, for days just to attend the church service. There are priests that drive 300 kilometers or miles, whatever, to serve in a church. Like, it's really about how far do you want to go? How important is Christ, the church, to you see there i got it <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, it doesn't happen to me a lot but it sometimes does and we won't make any cuts because we are natural anyway what else make a pray corn at home if there's truly no church truly no church near you for example you live on a deserted island in the philippines i don't know uh <laughs> pinoy stories but <laughs> that's a little inside joke from discord um the philippines but let's say for example if you 
live on a deserted island. What do you do? There's this thing called the Tipica, which is basically a document or more documents that have services, prayers, chants. Um, use these at home. Do the services yourself. Pray at home. Chant your uh, the hymns. Even though your voice might be bad, doesn't matter. It's to praise God. Make a prayer corner at home. Look up on the internet. How do I make a prayer corner? What do I need? Do the service at home. Um, and in this day and age of technology, there might be also another solution. Maybe Milos knows more about that. Um, yeah, exactly. So one of the things you can do is you could find a priest online and contact him and ask him for help. There are so many amazing priests on the internet that went that far and teach people how to pray at home, which prayers to do. Like uh, Demos already mentioned, do the service at home. So you're not be able to do the whole service. Some parts you are not allowed to do even. So the priest will exactly tell you which prayers to do, what they're called, and when to do them. So we will help you on that spiritual growth. And there are even online classes where you're going to learn about Orthodox theology that some priests offer whether it's over uh, Facebook, Zoom, or Discord. You might be able to find a lot of them. So yeah, link will be in the description of our Discord yeah. server. Where we have some amazing priests as well. Not only that, um, you can do confession nowadays if accepted by the bishop, online even, for uh, to a priest. For example, you do this, a Zoom call, just like we do now. You do the confession if it's um, supported by your bishop and the priest. And that's how you can do it, a confession, for example. Try to travel at least once to a church to get the Holy Communion or get baptized first, of course. Um, yeah, what else, Trahinia? Yeah, I was going to add to like contacting the priest online, of course, definitely a great tool, a great idea. Something else I did personally is that you can on you know maybe Sundays you can really not attend physically, watch uh, watch a live stream of the service and follow along with the stream because it can be a lot easier to like be in the prayer, be in the, in the you know in the moment in the service if you're watching the live stream of people actually like praying in a church. So yes. like I I did that before I went to a church. I first started like just watching uh, live streams, and uh, I think Sky's church streams services if i'm i may be wrong but yeah that's like he does his church does but not only his church if you um write down in the search bar on youtube orthodox church or divine liturgy orthodox and you filter on live you'll see many churches that stream their services so it might be proper for your time zone to do that um because some people live in asia for example there's a lot of people in asia that don't have a church near them or africa even though we're growing there. Uh, that's a very good tip, Stahinia. Just follow a service online um, mm. and that will help you tremendously. And don't forget to pray, read your books. There's so many Orthodox books out there. D dive deep into the knowledge of the saints. Read about the lives of the saints. And try maybe in your life to travel to an Orthodox church and get baptized. There's even catechumen classes online nowadays. You can ask to join them. Mm -hmm. I know. There, uh, some, there is even a dedicated cate uh, catechumen uh, uh, Discord server where they have uh, priests making like the classes and teaching about theological stuff and everything and are there for every uh, questions, whatever they may be. They are extremely nice people. And the other members who are, whether they are inquirers or catechumens or cradle orthodox, they are all willing to help you guys. So online, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, Strahinia already mentioned the Divine Liturgy live streams. There are even Vespers live streams. A Vesper is um, an evening service on Saturday. That's, the, that, that's what Vespers basically means. So another thing that a lot of people do for example, I know in some Arabic countries where it's like very dangerous to convert to uh, Christianity. I know one guy, he went and uh, did his catechism in a different country. He traveled. Maybe you're too young now to do that. 
but maybe one day you can do like those pilgrimages like take one month off and go for example to georgia or uh, romania serbia or even to the u.s and make their uh attend their uh a monastery and yeah, definitely. As the priests and the monks for advice. Yeah, even if there's a monastery not too far away from your place, like just getting in contact, you can all, always call and maybe arrange uh, a meeting there, go there, and uh, maybe the like chances are the monks can greet you and uh, they will for sure help you find the nearest possible church. Like, you know, people usually are very accepting in churches. Everywhere you go, like, that's also a big point. Like in real life, maybe if you're not used to, if you're shy, you're not used to visiting new places and it seems like a stressful thing to do, like people in real life will be really welcoming, whether it is the church or if you get in touch with the monastery, like for sure the people will be nothing but good to you and help you, you know, find. uh, Exactly, exactly. So I want to end with this. Don't go to a different kind of church the orthodox church and leading an orthodox life is from utmost importance to your soul so follow these tips that we gave you create a prayer corner at home you can order online that's international you can set up this prayer corner do the services listen to live streams or watch them and lead an orthodox life and once again Look at yourself. How far are you willing to go? How great is your devotion to Christ and his church? And with that, we're ending this sidecast for today. You will see the other group. We'll have a new episode on Thursday. a different subject. Sorry? On Thursday. On Thursday. Because we upload a sidecast on every Tuesday and Thursday. And in the weekend, the podcast. So thank you for watching. Thank you so much for the support we've been getting these past few weeks. Um, it's what makes what, what keeps us going so thank you so much have a great day night evening morning whatever and god bless <laughs> Thank you.